pretty much the same lineup, one through nine for Georgia, except Sarah Gordon inserted in as the catcher for game two and in that seventh spot for the Dogs. Davis leads us off. Cleethermus offers up a strike, and we're off and running for game two between Ole Miss and Georgia. Three walks in game one for, for Davis. You see her numbers entering today. Also had that two RBI single back in the sixth inning of game one. That added on to a two nothing lead that Georgia had at the time. The one one and called strike. McKenna Cleethermus, reigning SEC co-pitcher of the week, went three and zero in the circle last week. Dealt 17 innings, allowed one earned run. She struck out 17 all last week. Her ERA was .41. Just foul off the bat of Davis. Yeah, to say she was on fire out in the circle is an understatement. She pitched so well last weekend, and for her to get co-SEC player of the week was just icing on the cake. And I mean, the SEC in general, Missy, I mean, it's it, it seems like a professional league with how many good players there are in this league. Well, it's, a, it's the best of the best. I mean, that's just, it, that just goes without saying anymore. It used to be, you know, Pac-12 and then, you know, the, the SEC and then maybe the, the Big 12, but... Now you're losing all these conferences. It's no longer the Power Five. You have o uh, Oklahoma and Texas coming over to the SEC, so it's only going to get tougher. Foul tip, hung on by Brady, and a strikeout. Davis goes down for out number one, and Cleather misses first of the day. That is a huge strikeout after what we saw in game one from Lindy Ray Davis to get her out is huge. Great job and a great start for McKenna Cleethermus. And Cleethermus mowed down LSU hitters last weekend. She threw six and a third innings and allowed one earned run in her start. But she's really come on strong this year. She had a little bit of issue in the, in the Mississippi State Series, but she's come back strong. Pitching coach Carl Golan has really t uh, worked on her mental training, and it's really shown, and she's really been a lot more confident in the circle. Ryan Starr takes care of Mosley at short and two away for the Dogs here in the first inning. Two big first outs. I mean, this Georgia lineup, I know one through nine are tough, but, man, these first four or five hitters are excruciating for a pitcher. Yeah, absolutely, and you know it all comes back down to that mindset of McKenna Cleethermus, and she's doing such a tremendous job, and she's really going after the Georgia hitters. We saw that with the first two uh, hitters for Georgia. Two quick outs of of Davis and Mosley. She faces a first team All American, and Jada Kearney, or Kearney rather. That goes off the mitt of Brady, 2-0. and Carney sits fifth all-time in Georgia with 53 career home runs. She's two away from tying fourth. The 2-0. That's pretty impressive because Georgia's had some pretty talented hitters come through that program. Get me over strike, three and one. You know, I'm surprised some of these Georgia hitters don't have the green light on three and oh. I mean, you, you see their batting averages, right? And maybe that's just the, the non-coach in me <laughs> just blabbing out loud, Missy. Well, but. I do, I think it depends. You know, I always like to take a strike just to make sure. Uh, and, and I always gave 
my hitter, there was only one person I really ever gave the green light to, and that was Lauren Grill when um, I was here at Ole Miss just because I knew she was disciplined enough. And so it, it, it's coaches' preference, it's players and their knowledge of the zone and being able to sit back and drive that strike should they get it. Sydney Kuma takes a first pitch strike all the way from Fresno, California. Her stats entering today. Remember, we played game one earlier. Ole Miss was shut out seven to nothing. They were held to just one hit. Strike two. Oh, it's good to see uh, McKenna Kali Thermos come back after walking Jada Kearney to go up 0-2 on Kuma. Sends it to her own dugout. Heads up over there. Still nothing in two. Kuma was one for four back in game one. Flares this to shallow right center and it lands. Carney all the way to third base and Georgia has runners on the corners here in the first. Well, and as a pitcher, you hate to see these little blue pits that are kind of out in no man's land. You've worked really hard to get ahead in the count done a good job and then Kuma just muscles that ball out to shallow shallow right center field. Her second hit of the series it begins game two of our double header. One for one. Jaden Goodwin, runners on the corners, two gone. She rips this foul to the left side. If you can hear her dugout cheering for her, they're saying, go, go, shorty. That's her nickname. I mean, I guess when you stand 5'3", Missy, it's it's easy to for people to <laughs> rag on your height. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But uh, as we said in, in the earlier broadcast, she might be short, but she's mighty. Grand Slam th earlier this week against Georgia Southern had two home runs in that game. Let's it be as Kuma moves up to second base. There is no throw. Well, now runners at second and third in scoring position. Now two and two. Georgia left six runners on base in, in the first four innings of game one. Not the case in the final three innings of that game. They wound up winning seven to nothing. Let's see if they can get out to a start here early in game two. Goodwin lets it be full count. Rolls it over to the third base dugout. We'll do it again. Carney on third after the two out walk. And on second base right now, Sydney Kuma had that single to move Carney over to third. Ball four, bases are loaded. Two walks this inning now for McKenna Cleithermas. That has been McKenna Cleithermas's nemesis during her time here at Ole Miss is getting behind hitters and, and allowing free passes. 
We'll see how she comes back here against Ellie Armistead. Armistead takes low. Virginia native, outstanding statistics coming into today. Armistead did have a single back in the seventh inning of game one. She was one for three, including a strikeout and a ground out. Wound up scoring though in that seventh. Two and one to her. Georgia had bases loaded with two outs in the first inning of game one, too, but they left all three stranded. Bouncing ball to second base. De Leon throws her out for out number three, and Georgia leaves him this. And Lassiter on a line out to left field. Gets this first inning started for Ole Miss with a leadoff single. And that's what Ole Miss was missing back in game one. Uh, very aggressive by Jayla Lassiter, first pitch swinging. And maybe that's the key in this second game against her picks. Batting order for Ole Miss, Jaden Pohn at the plate, but pretty much the same lineup from earlier this afternoon from Jamie Traxel as Pohn lays down the bunt. They go to second, and Lassiter's out at second base. Sack bunt gone wrong. Just a little bit hard by Pone. Sarah Mosley gets on this ball quickly and is able to get the lead runner, Jayla Lassiter, at second base. It's a great play. That brings up Paige Smith, 256 hitter entering today. They try for the bunt again, but Smith pulls back for ball one. Sarah Mosley playing in at third base. Smith. Just, sorry, just in case Paige Smith tries to lay down another bunt. Which, if she offered, you know she's thinking about it or wants you to think about it. Mosley at third, still playing in front of the bag. When you look at Paige Smith's numbers, you think as a three-spot hitter hitting 256, that's kind of low. And Jamie Traxel said you, you wouldn't think it because of how hard she's hitting the ball. Just like this, a one-hopper to short. Armistead goes to second for one. First for two, in time. The dogs twist it. And you know, sometimes that happens and you just gotta pick back up and, and flush those losses and try to get back to where you were. Uh, you know, it's not like LSU hadn't played a tough non-conference schedule. Sarah Gordon leads things off for Georgia. Cleethor miss, misses her spot, one and one. Gordon in her first year at Georgia, a Louisville transfer. She's from Lexington, South Carolina. Began her career in Louisville. Transferred closer to home. It's now down one and two. Coming into this year, Gordon, on D1 softball's top 100 players list, Gordon came in at 62 and a number five catcher. She stays alive. She's played in all but nine games this year. Six for 35 at the plate, and that's surprising because last year at Louisville, she raked, hit 379 with 66 hits, belted 11 homers. I will say this though, you look at Georgia's schedule, they're basically playing a top 25 team once a week, maybe even sometimes twice a week, then 
The SEC's no slouch. No <laughs> weekends off. <laughs> No, every weekend is a grind when you're in SEC play. Sneaks this to the to, through the right side. And a leadoff single for Sarah Gordon, her seventh hit this season. Uh, just a great job by Sarah Gordon is down in the count, takes this offering that's a little bit too much over the plate and drives it into the 3-4 hole for a base hit. That brings up Emily Digby. Digby had two singles in game one. She was two for three, along with a walk and a ground out. And she chops this to short. Star picks it up and throws the second to get the lead runner. Digby safe at first. He was, when he had gotten there, and he actually said that his first year was a volunteer coach my last year here at Ole Miss, which was 2011. And so we have coached against each other, but he gives all the credit to Lou Harris Champer, the former coach, uh, former head coach at Georgia, who he uh, took over for. And, um, you know, that's quite a statement. He said everything that he's learned softball-wise has come from her. And... Uh, she is a or was a tremendous softball coach and did an amazing job at Georgia and before that at Southern Miss. Yeah, coach Baldwin said when he speaks at conventions about coaching, he titles his PowerPoint, Everything I Learned from Lou. That's right. <laughs> and, and like I said, she was an excellent coach. She's done... Uh, she had done a tremendous job at Georgia and um, you know he's just carried it on and and he said that he had become her voice because she didn't like communicating and being out there and doing that sort of stuff and so he has and he's done a great job. Dallas Goodnight forces the walk and runners on first and second base now for Georgia in the second inning, and we're back to the top of the order. Third walk already by McKenna Cleethermus. Lindy Ray Davis, so for one, struck out in her first time up. And she fouls away the first pitch. Coach Baldwin also said, Missy and I found this interesting, he said, you know, humbly, we haven't played our best softball yet. And, <laughs> you know, when you look at their body of work right now through 29 games, game one of this doubleheader, including their 25 and four, and he still doesn't think that Georgia has, they've played good softball, but he said, you know, we're, we still haven't played our best yet. Well, and as a coach, that's kind of what you want. You want to be playing well, but you want to peak towards the end of the season. And so you want to keep growing. You want to keep getting better. So uh, as a former coach, I get that. That's, that's exactly what you're looking for. Number two in the RPI right behind Stanford. And they played Stanford. They played Stanford and fell to the Cardinal. Stanford hit a walk-off home run in extra innings. Fouled off by Davis. Counts one and two. Stanford, one of four losses in the top 25 that Georgia has. Our home plate umpire getting new softballs. Ole Miss's softball complex, complex currently a construction zone site. You <laughs> aren't seeing it now. Oh, there we go. Yep, the uh, second deck. Foundation is up, but uh, obviously we're not asking fans to sit on open beams. <laughs> Only on the third base side, yes. though. They're not up on the first base side. And we're over at the soccer complex, so we hmm. can see the scoreboard and the beams, but nothing else. <laughs> Hello from down the road. That's right, from across the <laughs> way. But it's going to be absolutely beautiful when it gets done. And Excited to see 
Second strikeout of the day for Cleethermus, and both belong to Lindy Ray Davis. Well, and the reason I brought that up is because our nobody can go and get the, the foul balls in the construction zone, so they're just kind of there for a little bit. Harder well, to retrieve the foul ball when <laughs> it's a construction zone. Sarah, that's right. That's Sarah right. Mosley comes up. And it's funny because when I met with uh, head coach Jamie Traxel before uh, the Cla Ole Miss Classic, I joked with her about having to order more softballs because all of the foul balls were going into the construction area. And uh, she said, I had just ordered a new patch, <laughs> though. Uh, yeah, I'd hate to see what the, the cost for balls for Ole Miss is this year. Runners on first and second base for Georgia, two away. Top half of the second inning, and Georgia left. The bases loaded last inning. Got off to a slow start offensively in game one. They left six stranded through the first four innings before finally scoring seven runs in the last three innings. And Sarah Mosley down to her last strike. In the second, 0 for 1 today, grounded out to short her first time up. Just misses, full count. Some Georgia runners will be going on the pitch. Ball four, and Mosley takes her base. Back-to-back -back innings with bases loaded for Georgia. Four walks for McKenna Cleethermus through an inning and two thirds. Yeah, not what you wanna see if you're pitching coach Carl Golan or head coach Jamie Traxel. Free passes will come back and bite you quicker than anything. Carney at the plate and watches it go by for ball one. Digby reached on a fielder's choice. Good night was walked, as was Mosley. And Carney fouls it off. Coach Baldwin told the story of how he's known Carney since she was 13 years old. She too taking advantage of her last year. especially two in your last year. You don't want to take it too seriously, and, and Carney hasn't. She's, I know sometimes when you're struggling, you put a little more pressure on yourself at times. It's your last year. You want to go out with a bang, but, you know, she really hasn't this year, he was talking about. Well, I really love how he said she was such a hot mess. <laughs> we got a good laugh out of that. But uh, he said she's a great player, got a great personality, and that she is – getting better at not taking things so seriously. And really, in our sport, you fail more times than you succeed. And so it's important for you to not let those failings get you down. She takes ball four, and Cleethermus walks in a run. Georgia takes the lead here in the second inning. And I'm not sure if that's what she's shooting for, but you're going to have misses. You just got to gradually bring it back over the plate. That brings up Sydney Kuma. Single and a stolen base back in the first inning. 32 hits now for her this season. Comes in with already a 1-0 lead over Ole Miss and base is loaded. When you're a hitter and you have a pitcher inside the circle struggling, Missy, what's your approach? Well, you just need to be patient. And when she offers up your pitch, then you go get it. Uh, right now, Clee Thermos does a good job after that 
talk from Carl Golan come back and throw a first pitch strike. Sydney Kuma, someone you can't take lightly when she's at the at the plate hitting now nearly 400. NFCA third team All-American a season ago. Strike call, one and two. Uh, McKenna Cleethermas working the inside part of the plate on Kuma, trying to jam her and gets ahead now in the one two count. Hard hit ball, past the diving De Leon. One runs in for the dogs. Here comes the second, the throw is in time. <laughs> Damage done by Georgia though, on top of Ole Miss in the top half of the second. Yeah, just a great job by Jayla Lassiter coming through this ball, getting it to home and throwing out Sarah Mosley coming around to runner. Mosley safe at home. That's a huge run for Georgia. You have runners at first and second. Jada Kearney at second and Kuma with that two RBI single to center. And Georgia's offense getting started early here in Oxford. But Jake, that's what walks will do to you. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it'll come back and bite you, and that's what it's done. A rope off the bat of Goodwin, and this loads the bases up. Goodwin's 12th hit of the season. She stays hot for Georgia. Carney and Kuma move up. Carney uh, at third, Kuma at second base. Ellie Armistead now at the plate. And you mentioned the walks, Missy. Three walks is sitting, two of them have now come around to score. But the potential of a third one in Carney. Uh, you just, you never want to give up free passes. Yeah, I, I'd rather, as a coach, have them hit the ball mm. where my defense can make a play off of it rather than give up those free passes. Because it's, it's different if you come with a good game plan and you're executing that game plan and the other team beats you, right? right. You, you just tip your cap at the end of the day, but if you shoot yourself in the foot, it's a different story. That's exactly right. Ole Miss just needs to get out of this inning, stop the bleeding, and try and get some offense going. One and two to Armistead. Got her for strike three. He hasn't been on point today. They need to find the answers here in the second game to try and salvage the day. And if you're Madison Kerpix, you've been in the dugout for quite some time after seeing the minimum three batters in the first inning. Lexi Brady leads off for Ole Miss in the second. After Georgia scored three runs off three hits. They were allowed three walks as well from Cleethermas and the dogs took advantage. Yeah, she could have gone down to the bullpen and maybe thrown a little bit or, uh, you know, it, it was a long time to sit in the dugout. So we'll see how she fares. But she's sitting in, in the dugout for good reason, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my offense is just going yeah. around, Mary go around the rate, the basis. And now she's got a three nothing lead coming into the home half of the second. Brady yanks this one high and deep to left. It's gone. <laughs> oh, 
Homer number 10 for Brady. Well, that's a big hit for Lexi Brady. And as we talked about during the first game, oh, it, it, it becomes kind of a chain reaction, a domino effect. If you can get your offense going, and baby Lexi Brady here starts it off for Ole Miss. How far do you think that went? I mean, she knew it too. <laughs> yeah, that was a no doubt home run. Boy. Reason to celebrate if you're Ole Miss. Down two, your first run scored of the series. Ansley Furbush comes up to follow up that solo shot by Brady. Just the fourth homer allowed this season too by Madison Kerpix. Well, and it's not like Ole Miss doesn't have the offense. Mm. Uh, you know, you just got to, uh, like you said, tip your hat to Willie Backus in that first game uh, on the one hitter. Now Ole Miss just needs to flush that game, focus on what Madison Kerpix has to offer, and try and keep the momentum going off of Lexi Brady's home run. Furbish with a high drive, deep left field. Ole Miss goes back to back. What did we say? Hitting is contagious. And what a turn of events here for Ole Miss and their offense with back-to-back -back jacks by Lexi Brady and Ansley Furbush. Ole Miss cuts the lead of Georgia three to two. was shut out in game one against LSU last weekend. They won games two and three. Shut out in game one of this series, Missy. Could make games three and uh, two and three interesting in this one. Absolutely, and, and you know, as we said, hitting is contagious, and we see that with those back-to-back -back home runs. Rummel out to center, not enough though. Catch is made by Goodnight as she battles the sun. But Rummel was uh, pretty close to making it three straight. Absolutely. Just missed that one off the bat. And Jamie McKay comes up. Now batting, Rummel right fielder, number 20, Jamie McKay. First pitch strike. We've been told that Shelby Walters, the graduate student and right-hander, up and getting loose for Georgia. And McKay gets a piece of it. Here, Kerpix does a good job of getting ahead of McKay. Now she can kind of play around with the zone and see if she can't bite on a, a pitcher's pitch here. Way off the plate. Check swing, did she go around? The appeal, yes she did, strike three. Two down for Ole Miss in the second. Well, that's a great job of Madison Kerpix coming back after giving up those two home runs and getting two quick outs of Delaney Rummel and Jamie McKay. And DeLeon takes upstairs. It's her first at bat today. I should say in game two. She was 0 for 2 in game one, just a strikeout and a ground out. That's how good Lily Backus was. It allowed one hit in the bottom of the order, only saw two at bats all game. Pulls it too much. Foul ball. Coming into this game, 
Madison Kerpix led the staff with a 1.95 ERA and opponent batting average of just 160. Two and two. Check swing. This is fair down the first baseline. And Digby tags her out. He's back to off here for the dogs in the third. Here McKenna Cleather, Miss Missy, back in that second inning, you allow three runs, you walk three batters, allow three hits, but your offense was there for you in the second inning. They got two back for you. What's your approach here in the circle in inning number three? Well, you just want to get back to the game plan, and that's hit your spots, work the zone, try and get ahead on the Georgia hitters and not fall behind, and that's what we saw her do in that first inning. Pops her up. Out to Lassiter in center. And she hangs on their fun series. No weekends off in the SEC, I'll tell you that. As Digby fouls off the first pitch, nothing in one to start. Of course, you hear the dogs barking from their <laughs> dugout, right? I mean, well, they came in with a beware of dog <laughs> sign. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. I mean, you, you admire the creativity. And that's what softball is, right? I mean, you, you just have, you just put together all these creative minds. Well, the... The, uh, the nicknames, the chants. Right. The Mississippi State Series, Ole Miss had a skeleton uh, that they had in their dugout. I don't know if it's still there today, but... I found that interesting. <laughs> Swing and a miss, and Dig Digby's down on strikes. And if you're McKenna Cleather, miss two quick outs here in the third inning after allowing three runs. It's just how she wanted this. Absolutely, she, you saw her do that though in the first inning. She got two quick outs, and then gave up walk as a couple of walks and and a hit. So she really needs to take care of Dallas Goodnight here. Framed by Brady, but ball one. So you see good night so far today, walking a run scored. Now five straight games with a hit for good night after she singled in game one of our double header today. Her batting average, 354 coming into today. Career best for her so far. Last year she finished with a 304 average. In her first year at Georgia, started her collegiate career at Alabama and made the interconference transfer. But she's also a stolen base threat. If she gets on, she's seven of nine for stolen bases this year. 47 stolen bases for her. This is year three of her career. Two and two. Payoff pitch coming up. hit ball foul. And it looked like the Kennecle Thermos took a little bit off of that pitch. Dallas Goodnight does a good job of protecting the plate. And we got another 3-2 count.
strike three call. And Cleetham has seized the minimum here. At third base, Jaden Pohn in left field and Ryan Starr at shortstop. Kerpik still inside the circle for Georgia and deals a first pitch strike to Starr. Starr is not a natural left-hander. and I found her story very interesting, Missy. When she switched travel ball teams, her new travel ball coach said, you know what, I think you would benefit more if you were a lefty slap hitter, but Starr hit right-handed. So she would have to travel down to Nashville to and from sometimes to, to learn how to hit lefty. And Starr's from New York. She's, <laughs> it's not an easy drive from New York down to Nashville to, to go and learn how to hit left-handed. But then the pandemic hit, and she couldn't travel anymore to learn from other people how to hit left-handed. So what did her dad and her do? They make their own batting cage at home in the attic. And uh, a viral video of her went, uh, saw a lot of interactions on social media of her, you know, getting work done, trying to learn to hit left-handed up in her attic. And her parents even joked, there are a lot of broken lights back in the day <laughs> up bet. in that attic. I bet, but with her speed, I can understand why uh, the coach wanted her to try batting from the left side and I mean look what it's done for her. down on the count one and or excuse me it's two and two and she fights off that pitch to stay alive but she played for a travel ball team in north carolina she would travel from north carolina from may to august just to play softball play for a good club team good travel ball team made her way to syracuse and now here down in the sip and Ole Miss returns it back up the middle. Armistead from short makes the play for out number one. And we're back topside for Ole Miss with Jayla Lassiter. There was such thing as all conference swag. I'm sure Jayla Lassiter would be first team. Yeah, and I, I found it funny when I saw the other day, when did you learn that? And she said, I was born with it. I was born with it. She is a very confident young lady, and uh, there's a reason why. She is a phenomenal athlete, and not to hey, mention a hey, amazing hey, outfielder, and hits the ball well. She's just got it all so why not have that swagger and I asked Jamie Traxel too we talked to her earlier this week about it about where it comes from as she yanks this down the line foul but also is there a negative side to that and Jamie Traxel said her negative emotion mainly comes from frustration and anger but you know she always says coach don't don't stop believing in me. I'm going to come around. I'm coming at you, coach. You know, that, that type of Don't energy. Don't give up on me. Don't give I up got on you. Me. Yeah. yeah. And I, <laughs> that's hard to, hard to have as a freshman. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, we talked a, a little bit about it earlier. We're in a failed sport, so you have to kind of keep that positive mentality. And, you know, she believes in herself and knows that she can get the job done. And she just wants to make sure that. Coach Jamie Trexel stays with her, and I, I got I got you, Coach. In the air, out to right center. Right Who's got it? And caught by Goodnight, and that retires the sophomore Lassiter. She's one for two now today. So two gone for Ole Miss here in the third. That brings up Jaden Pone. And we talked about transfers earlier. Jane Pone being one of them comes to Ole Miss from Oxford. Reigning Big South Player of the Year last year. And her freshman year, she was freshman of the year. That a go. Good take. Good job. 0 for 1 today. Reached on a fielder's choice back in the first Come on, inning. Hit a gap right here. Come on. Well, and she, prior to the earlier game, was leading the team in batting average at 390. So she puts the ball in play. She does a good job. In fact, That's Jamie Traxel, right when, when Jayla Lassiter was struggling, he had moved her into the leadoff spot and did a great job while she was there. First on the team in batting average and on base percentage. Reached in 21 of her last 24 games. 
But she hit over 400 at Longwood in both seasons. And over 70 hits in both seasons. Well, she just puts the ball in play. That's you right in the driver's seat, six. Come on, you box it up. Kerpix, after allowing back-to-back -back homers in the second, is one out away from seeing the minimum here in the, in the third. Three and two. Let's see make something happen right here. Come on. That was a really nice screw ball by Kerpix, hitting the outside part of the plate. Check swing, she went around for strike three. She has been shutting down, I think, Lindy Ray Davis. She's got two strikeouts in her first two at bats. Yeah, she's 0 for two, both strikeouts swinging. After game one, she reached in all of her plate appearances but one. So four of her five plate appearances, including three RBIs in game one. She's up to 25 now on the season. Her career most is 27, which she had her freshman year back in 2022. And she's up 2-0 to start. This was coming into today, 12 walks over 10 games. You can now update that to 15 walks in 11 games after our one from earlier today. That's just absurd. Yeah, and she may have another one here as uh, Cleethermis is throwing her three balls. There it is. Fourth of the series. Fifth for Cleethermis. Yeah, and not the way you want to start off this inning, especially this part of the lineup. And we see a pinch runner coming in here for Lindy Ray Davis. It's Hannah Davila, the freshman. Now batting the third baseman, number 33, Sarah Mosley. And Sarah Mosley steps in. She gets under this, out to left, first pitch swinging. And Pone makes the catch. And Mosley's now 0 for 2 today with a walk and a run scored. I think if I'm Mosley, after getting a four pitch walk to Lindy Ray Davis, I'm taking a couple of pitches and making Cleet Thermos throw me a strike. Two walks in game two of our doubleheader for Jada Kearney, including an RBI with bases loaded, she worked a walk. Kearney had a single and a run scored in game one. She was one for four. She had a stint with USA Softball last summer. Competed with Team USA Softball in the Japan All-Star Series, went two for nine at the plate, and of course she had to go yard. <laughs> she ranks fifth all-time in Georgia with 53 career homers. Again, Clee Thermos falls behind here on Kearney. Walks haunted Clee Thermos in the second, Missy, and she's walked two here in the fourth inning. Uh, she's thrown nine pitches so far in this inning, and the only pitch that has been well we won't know because it was hit was going to go out there and she's going to give you her best effort 
She inherits two runners, and that nearly hits Sydney Kuma in the batter's box. Kuma two for two, two RBIs in game two of our doubleheader. And Furbush calls time. Kuma now at 14 RBIs this season. She had 49 a year ago and a career most. And here she gets behind Sydney Kuma, which we talked about it. This part of the lineup for Georgia is very potent and you don't want to get behind and have to come back over the plate with a strike. Furbush pitched last weekend against LSU in game one. She threw two innings and allowed two earned runs. Two hits, walked one. Game two, she tossed three and a third, allowed six hits, including a home run. To third, Rummel steps on third, goes to first, not in time. So Ole Miss gets the lead runner. Now there are two gone in the fourth. That was a great job by Rummel. Had the heads up to take this ball and step on the bag and try and double up Kuma at first base. Just too much speed by Kuma. No, Gets so down the line quickly. Jaden Goodwin. Singled back in the second inning. Has the opportunity to add more insurance to Georgia's one run lead. Up to 12 hits now this year after her single in the second. Coach Baldwin's saying too, she's started her climb up. You mentioned we have so many good players on our team, just not enough spots. <laughs> and that's... That's a tough uh, problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Must be nice. Yeah, yeah, right? That's the situation Goodwin has fallen into. But again, starting her climb up, Grand Slam. Earlier this week against Georgia Southern, she also, I mean, she homered twice in that game. And with a bat like that, it's hard to keep her out of the lineup. That's what Coach Baldwin meant when he's talked to us earlier this week. Good cut there, one and two. Two and two, rather. Flared out to left, gets down in front of Pone. Around third, Kearney, she scores the throw to third. Runners on the corners. One in for Georgia, and they're up two. Yeah, you're right, Jake. That was just a little flare out to shallow left field, giving Kearney a chance to score. But heads up, base running by Kuma goes all the way to third base. Two hit game two now for Goodwin. Her 13th RBI of the season. And runners are back on the corners for the Dogs and Armistead takes strike one. Ground out, strike out in our second game for Armistead. Now she's down in the count, 0-2. Oh Swung on in the left center field, and a basket catch. No, it was dropped by Starr. I thought she had it out in left center. Another run in for Georgia. 
What a heck of an effort by Ryan Starr, though, to go back on this ball and try and make an over-the-shoulder catch. Just can't hang on. And Kuma comes in to score, and Jaden Goodwin goes all the way to third base. Man, Missy, it looked like she had that. That would have been <laughs> the play of the day defensively. Yeah, absolutely. That I think that might have made ESPN top 10. But just a great effort. Just unfortunately just couldn't come up with it. And, you know, in this game, Georgia really hasn't hit the ball hard. It's just been bloop seeing eye singles that have fallen for them to score those five runs. Gordon takes up and in, and meanwhile, Armistead just takes second base. An easy trot for her down to yeah. advance herself to second. Lexi Brady not even making an attempt to throw to second. Two runs here in the fourth inning for Georgia. They were up one on Ole Miss coming into the inning. A nice change up there by Furbush. Pulls the string. Sarah Gordon just watches it go by. And again with the nicknames, you hear her dugout calling her Gordy. <laughs> it's a well, nice, nice play in her last name. Yep, that's right. Well, Gordy's got a 3-2 count, so the runners will be going on this pitch. Bases are loaded. But these walks are just killing Ole Miss. And looks like Coach Baldwin comes down the third base line to make a change. Which change though, we're not sure quite yet. Jane Fields into pinch hit. Saw Fields start in game one. And she's going to pinch hit for Digby. Down the right field line, but hooks foul. Fields actually got the scoring going in the first game. She got a single out to left field that started the rally for Georgia. Yeah, that was in the fifth inning. You're right, put Georgia on the board to be, or I should say in the fifth inning of that game, drawing first blood for the dogs. Comes in with bases loaded, two away. Off the inner part of the bat, sends it the other way. And into Georgia's bullpen. Well, and this could be a testament to what Tony Baldwin said with the depth of his lineup. How many teams have a a field that you can pull in. Yeah, a second, a second team all SEC are on the bench. R right. Yeah. <laughs> NFCA all Southeast region That's last right. year. That's right. Hey, come on in. I need you to hit. I mean, we're told earlier, Brianna Lopez and Caitlin Riley were warming up in the bullpen for Ole Miss. Well, it's gonna be a pitch by committee. They're gonna have to figure out how to shut down these Georgia hitters.
Fields puts it in play, a grounder to short, flip to second base in time. There's out number three, it's Georgia. Those two solo home runs are, are it. Her team's still ahead as she comes out of the ball game. Faces Paige Smith in game two, grounded into a 6-4-3 double play her first time up. Walters in D1 softball's top 100 players. She was ranked 44th and the 16th best pitcher according to the outlet. In fact, her and Kerpitz earned all SEC honors last year. That's the first time in Bulldogs history that two pitchers were all SECers. Wow, that's great. Fouled off by Smith. And you can see she's been in the 70s with her pitches, and there she comes back with that changeup at 57. Smith under it to, to the left side. And Armistead catches it for round number one. I'm sure we'll show Furbush's home run as, as well. Those two went back to back, back in the second inning. Tenth homer of the year for Brady, team leading tenth homer too. And Brady also leads in RBIs, but now I believe it would be 29. So he's really done a great job of pushing runs across. Old Miss. Gets a piece of it, down one and two. Brady only had three homers last year. That was a career high. Absolutely decimating that number now this year. <laughs> Ten. Triple that and a little more. Brady lofts it to the right side and to the construction vehicles. Ole Miss building a new stadium this year should be complete next season. When Lexi Brady came in as a freshman, she had a lot of pinch hit opportunities and she did such a great job, but I'm afraid game. Furbush's third of the season Now the Rebels, they were down one after the back-to-back -back homers. But like good teams do in Georgia, they responded in the fourth with two runs off two hits, capitalized off three walks, two last in the top half of this inning. Furbush is down one and two. Shelby Walters really working the outside part of the plate, and getting ahead in the count here against Ansley Furbush. Chases it outside for strike three. Our double header after we were washed out yesterday. Georgia took game one after holding Old Miss to just one hit. Lily Backus was unbelievable this afternoon. And Georgia shut out Ole Miss seven to nothing. All seven runs scored in the last three innings. Nine of the dogs, 13 hits coming in the final three innings of our first game today. And Georgia on top, five to two in the fifth inning in our second game of the day. Fouled off by Dallas Goodnight.
She's 0 for 1 today with a strikeout looking. But she also has one of the eight walks that has been given up by Ole Miss so far today. Hard to win a ball game when you're giving up that many walks. Yeah, not a good day for Ole Miss pitchers. And Missy, especially against a top five team in the country, that's you give them that many free passes, it's hard not to win a game when you give them right, that many. Right. And, you know, honestly, uh, Georgia is struggling in this game with leaving runners on base. They've already left nine on base in this game. They'll take this 5-2 lead, though. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and then they'll figure out, they'll go back to the drawing board and figure out how to score those nine runs that they've left on base. Very well coached team by Tony Baldwin. Fouled off by a good night. Still two and two. We had a chance to talk to him. I just love some of the things that he had to say. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, talking about preparing for the challenges, you know, the, the team understanding that there's going to be challenges, but you have to prepare for them. So when the fire shows up, you can handle it together. Good night took that pitch off the inner arm. This hurts, right? Ooh. You don't typically wear a elbow guard on your inside arm. <laughs> yeah, you can see her wincing. Mm. That brings us to the top of the order and Lindy Ray Davis. But good night on the board, or I should say on the base paths. And Missy, we've talked about her reputation stealing bases. 47 coming into the weekend in her career. She had 22 last year at Georgia. Her first year of college softball at Alabama, Goodnight stole 18 bases. And she takes off. Throw down. Not in time. That's her first of the day. She has not only done a great job at the plate, but in her last 10 games, she is two for three in stolen bases to go along with that 500 batting average. Pretty pitch by Furbush to Davis. Two and one. Line drive, caught by the second baseman and a double play attempt from De Leon. Just a, not in time to star covering second base. That was a great heads up play by De Leon. That ball's a rocket over to her at second base. She flips over to Ryan Starr. Just gets back in time. Sarah Mosley 0 for 2 with a walk, run scored in game two. Runner in scoring position with one away for the dogs here in the fifth. Sends this the other way down the line, just foul. Mosley had three hits in game one of our doubleheader. Now at 33 hits this season, did bring in a run. She had 43 RBIs this season. And with a runner in scoring position, she has the opportunity to add one more on. 
She was one RBA, uh, RBI two away from moving up to sixth all time in Georgia history. And with that RBI from earlier today, she's moved up to sixth. She had an RBI single back in the seventh, tied with Megan Wiggins from 08 to 2011. 206 career RBIs. Have to reload on softballs. There's that new batch that Coach Traxel ordered. <laughs> Mosley takes low, counts even. And with her three hits earlier too, Mosley is now two hits away from cracking top 10 all time in hits in Georgia history. Man, she's had such a good career. Yeah, she has really done a great job for these Georgia Bulldogs. Way out in front of this one and to the restricted area that is the construction zone sites behind the dugouts. Mosley continues to battle, looking for her first hit in game two of the series. Pops this down the right field line. McKay dives, comes up short. It almost looked like McKay lost it for a second and then had to pick it up. I don't know if the sun played a factor in that or So one thing too with the softball field being what it is, it, it's flipped. So the sun now sets behind home plate instead of behind the first base dugout. Chopper to short, there's Star. And it's in time. That's a great job by Star. As Dallas Goodnight ran right in front of her heading to third base. It was a good, good job to maintain her focus and be able to make the throw over to Paige Smith at first base to get Mosley. Jada Kearney with the opportunity at the plate with two down. Spoils that pitch, nothing in one. Jada Kearney has been a walk machine in this game with three walks. Definitely getting her steps in for sure, one and one. <laughs> She's definitely shown a lot of discipline at the plate in this game, earning those three walks. Especially being the power hitter that she is too. Sometimes power hitters, Missy, you can fall in the trap of a lot of swing and miss. That's exactly right, right. yeah. Not the case for Kearney. Healthy cut, but comes up empty. That's a nice pitch on the outside part of the plate by Ansley Furbush. Counts full with two down. And goes back to the same area, just a little bit off the plate. Runners on the corners now with two outs. No hits for Georgia this inning. The fourth walk for Kearney. What's the term for a four walk day? I know <laughs> what, it, what it is for a four strikeout day, but. <laughs> no. Kind of unheard of. Haley Eaton, pinch runner at first base for Kearney. 
Sydney Kuma, two singles today, two RBIs. Also a run scored. Wanted that one, nothing in one. In front of it, and two Ole Misses bullpen. So got to give a shout out to the Ole Miss women's basketball team. They won 67-55 over Marquette. Oh wow! Going to a second round. That's right. In the NCAA tournament. Two and two. And taking second base with ease. Eaton, the pinch runner. Brady opting not to throw down to second base. That's the second runner we've seen jog into second base for Georgia. The shortstop, Star, stopped it from going into the outfield, but Kuma's safe at first base. And Goodnight comes across home. Another run in for Georgia on top of Ole Miss 6-2. to two. Yeah, she does a good job of, like you said, stopping it from going into the outfield, but with the runner at third base, just no chance and Goodnight scores. Should be a three RBI day, or I should say game two for Sydney Kuma. And now three for four on the day. And they give Kuma the single. That brings up Jaden Goodwin, who had an RBI single her first time, or last time up, back in the fourth. Well, Ansley Furbush did a good job of getting ahead in the count on Kuma, but just couldn't put her away. Same here with Goodwin. She gets ahead in the count 0-2. Let's see what she does. Normally, you want your pitcher to miss, but not miss that much. And, and that's what we've seen with the last two hitters that Furbush has faced. Back-to-back -back pitches off the plate, two and two. Georgia's had traffic on the base paths in all but one inning in this game. Fouled off, still two and two. See Eaton, the pinch runner at second base. Sidney Kuma on first base. Four-run lead for the fifth-ranked Dogs. Chopped right side. And De Leon throws her out for out number three. Georgia adds one. Yeah, you just can't keep yourself in the game if you're uh, allowing that many walks to get on base. And um, we've seen the struggles in the circle for the Ole Miss pitchers today. They need the offense to try and get something going here to get them back in the game. Delaney Rummel at the plate. 0 for 1 in this game. She flew out to center field her first time up. And in the fifth inning, Missy, this is her second at bat. Fifth inning. Right. That just goes to show that uh, the Georgia pitchers are shutting them down. You had the two mistakes by Kerpik in the in the second inning with the two home runs, and that's been pretty much the entire offense. Just one other hit that was given up to Jayla Lassiter to start the game. A bloop to the right side and caught by Kuma.
fouled off the bat of Jamie McKay. Hey, Jim. Hey, 20. Come on, you. Walters started Jamie McKay off with a changeup. She just gets a piece to foul it off. Walters jams her inside. Walters is doing a really good job of mixing speeds, keeping the ball down in the zone. There we see her come in with a rise ball to kind of change the eye level, but she's done a good job since she, she came in in the, t in the bottom of the fourth inning. Another pitch fouled off by McKay. And that three-headed monster that is this pitching staff for the Bulldogs, right? And Backus, got to look at Kerpix to start game two. And now we're getting a look at Walters. Three very tough pitchers to get hits off of. It makes you wonder who we're going to see tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when you have Backus who throws a, a one-hit shutout earlier, she was one out away from a no-hitter. Ansley Furbush for Ole Miss, the lone hit last game. Off the backhand of Digby. She stopped it from going into the outfield, though, as McKay reaches first base. That was a great job by Digby to stop it, but just nobody over there to cover first when she got the handle on it. Now batting the Rebel second baseman, number 26, Angelina Talion. DeLeon comes up to bat now. 0 for 1, ground out to the first baseman, her first time up. And she rips this to the right side. It's caught. Throw up to first. In time, a double play for Georgia. Caught by Coop. And I'm sure that after this game is over that they will look at that. Garmaset is safe at first base. Snuck the bunt down the first baseline for her second hit of this game. Yeah, just a great job. Just catches Ole Miss on their heels, lays down the perfect bunt to Paige Smith, and just not enough time to get her out at first base. Already three hits now this series for Armistead. She had a single in game one. And Gordon sits on the first pitch. Armistead a threat to run. But to go back to what we were talking with the 11 runners left on base, hey, you got to figure out how to score that, uh, those runners. And I'm sure that they'll go back and watch film and, and figure out what they could do differently. Backhand by Rummel, second for one. They go to first in time. Ole Miss turns the double play here in the sixth, two away. That's a great job by Rummel. Snags that ball to her to her right, gets it over to De Leon at second, and then the first for the 5-4-3 double play. Digby back to hit after she was pinched hit for in the fourth inning by Jaden Fields. And Digby, fielder's choice, a run scored. And also struck out back in the third. Fly ball out to McKay and Wright. Looking up, this ball's out of here. Digby's third. Oh, Ole Miss gets the 5-4-3 double play. Thank goodness, because if not, that's some extra runs scored on this oppo field. Home run by Digby. And this power that we've been researching coming into the weekend that Georgia has, we finally have seen it. 
53 homers as a team this season. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. A lot of the runs that have been scored today, Jake, have been these bloop singles. And now you finally get something out of Georgia that you've been expecting the last game and a half. And that's a home run out to right field by Digby. 7-2 Georgia, back-to-back -back games, posting seven runs here in Oxford. And Dallas Goodnight follows that solo shot up. Off the bat, foul though to the left, one and one. Goodnight has walked, struck out looking, and she was hit by a pitch. She has scored twice. But we also talk about, Missy, the home runs per game that Georgia came in this weekend with. It was 1.86, so nearly two homers a game. <laughs> it's fifth in the country. Right, that's just insane. Chopper to short. And Starr throws across for out number three, but the solo shot by D six for, the Rebels. for Ryan number Starr. Eight, Eddie Annie Orman's first at bat in this series. Come on, Annie. And she takes the first pitch strike. Myrtle, Mississippi native. Those are her numbers entering today. Has a career high nine hits this season. Two quick strikes from Shelby Walters inside the circle. Yeah, she's worked those two pitches on the outside part of the plate. Look like drop balls. Goes back there again, doesn't miss by much. You get a smile from catcher Sarah Gordon. Makes me think it was close. And Walters hasn't had a good march. Her ERA this month, Missy, is 5.58 in 24 and two-thirds innings of work. She's allowed 15 earned runs. In February, that ERA was three. Struggling this month. Line drive to left, and it's all the way to the wall, over the head of Goodwin. Orman hustles to second base. The throw, she's upstanding. Lead-off double by the pinch hitter, Orman in her fourth double this year. Uh, she does a great job. Shelby Walters misses high in the zone with this pitch, and Annie Orman just takes it and drives it out to left field. Jaden Goodwin has a little bit of issue handling that. Or might have been, might have held her to a single if she would have handled it cleanly. Brings up Jayla Lassiter. Uh, Ole Miss re-enters Ryan Starr to run. That's an advantage to softball. Right. You can re-enter players. Absolutely. Lasseter had a single to begin the offensive second game for Ole Miss back in the first. Well, Walters got ahead quickly on Annie Orman here. Um, say 1-1 one, one count. Off the end of the bat of Lassiter, into right. It gets down in front of Kearney. Star up to third. Lassiter takes second base. Uh, just aggressive base running by Jayla Lassiter. We've talked about Georgia getting all these seeing eye singles well Jayla Lassiter gets one there and Ole Miss has something brewing here in the bottom of the sixth inning and that brings up Jaden Pone Pone hitless in game two fielder's choice and a strikeout opportunity for Ole Miss to cut into this deficit. Corners play in for Georgia. 
You have the middle infield too that looks like they're playing in to try and cut off the runners at home. You have no outs here for Ole Miss. Ole Miss down five. And there's strike one. Pone was hitting 390 coming into today. Average down to 272 now. Yet to have a hit in this doubleheader. Pone had a sack bunt, a bloop out, and a strikeout in game one earlier. Off the inside part of the bat to short, and Armistead takes care of her. Runners stay put. There's out number one. Yeah, it's a great job by Armistead to hold Star at third base and get the out of Pone. Knowing the speed that Pone has, she really had to get rid of the ball quickly. Big spot here for Paige Smith. 0 for 5 in the series against Georgia, but she's put the ball in play each time. Attacks the first pitch. Nothing in one. Smith flew out twice in game one. A hard line out in the seventh to round out the first game of the series. But then 6-4-3 double play today and a pop out. Lines this to right center and it gets down. Stark comes in to score. Lassiter stays put at third. And Ole Miss cuts into the deficit thanks to the RBI single by Paige Smith. Yeah, you got to give credit, though, to Dallas Goodnight to get the ball in quickly to prevent Jayla Lassiter come home on that play. And Lexi Brady steps in. Solo shot in the second that put Ole Miss on the board. And Shelby Walters struck her out back in the fourth inning. Gordon tried to frame it, ball one. Her team leading 10th home run of the season. It's the first real sign of struggle that we've seen from Shelby Walters today, Missy. Yeah, and, and one of the issues is she's getting the ball a little bit up in the zone. She needs to really concentrate on using that drop ball, staying down in the zone against these Ole Miss hitters. Now you see her behind on Lexi Brady. In the fourth and fifth inning, she saw the minimum three batters. Allowed one hit, though. Now this inning, double, single, ground out, single. And Ole Miss has brought one across. Brady lets it be for ball four. First time I've been able to say this, Ole Miss has bases loaded. <laughs> that was great at bat by Lexi Brady. You know, she had a 3-1. It's the second inning when Brady and Furbush went back to back. Now those home runs were not against Shelby Walters. They were against Maddie Kerpix, the starter. As Furbush takes strike one. And you have the middle infielders and first and third playing back, looking at a potential turn of a double play. Just off the plate. Furbush turns on it through the left side. Hole, base hit. Lassiter comes home. Ole Miss with two scored here in the sixth inning. And they're down three. Well, and that's what Ole Miss needed is just to string some hits together. 
and that's what they've done. So great job of hitting by Ansley Furbush, putting the ball in play, giving Ole Miss an opportunity. Paige Smith at third base, Lexi Brady at second, and Furbush now at first base. And as I say that, they bring in a pinch runner for Furbush. Taylor Malvin, number 22, the pinch runner. And that brings up Delaney Rummel, 0 for 2. So far in our second game, she was 0 for 1, rather, in game one against Georgia with a walk. No change for the dogs. They stick with Walters. Bases loaded. What was 7 to 2 coming into this bottom half of the sixth is now 7 to 4. It wouldn't surprise me, Jake, if we saw Lily Backus in this game to close it out for Georgia. Cut on and missed. Yeah, Backus was one out away from a no hitter in game one of our double header. And instead of maybe Missy saving her for tomorrow, they well, may have to bring her in. Yeah, and, and last weekend they used all three pitchers in uh, a couple of the games. And so it, it's not beyond them to do that. You also can look at it this way, that Lily Backus is a left-handed pitcher. So it's coming from a different side. She's slower than what you're seeing from Walters, who's hitting 70 consistently. So it would be a, definitely a different look. A bloop to short. Armistead leaps to make the catch, and there's out number two. Georgia needed that as Jamie McKay comes up. Two gone. And if Walters can get out of this inning, probably give her the nod in the seventh. Well, McKay had the only hit prior to this inning that Walters gave up to right field. First pitch strike to McKay. Tying run at first, leading run at the plate for Ole Miss. They've not led at all in this series. Walters is such a competitor. I watched her pitch last weekend and just, you know, she's that raw, raw type where she'll pump her fist and she'll, you know, point to her teammates where Lily Backus doesn't, is more the quiet thunder. But a senior who's been in this situation before, so she knows how to handle it. Back up the middle, base hit for McKay. One run is in, here comes a second, the play at the plate, in time! Brady's gunned down at home plate. Stands. Runners out at home plate, and that does end the bottom half of the sixth. Ole Miss now, Ole Miss. said they took advantage of it last inning. After scoring, after having only one hit in the first game. They have now have nine hits in this game. But you know Georgia would love to respond. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And you gotta get these three outs if you're Ole Miss. Especially against Lindy Ray Davis, known to get on base in this leadoff spot in the dogs lineup. She struck out twice today, has worked a walk, and a line out. Well, there's a reason why she's in that leadoff spot. And she's just done such a great job since March the 8th, taking over in the leadoff. Not been a factor today, but works the count three to one. And when you're playing from behind, 
like Ole Miss is right now in the seventh, this first out's very important. Oh, absolutely. You want to get a clean, you know, three outs quickly as you can so you can keep that momentum offensively and bring it back into the dugout. Davis swings and misses on the 3-1. Got her. Strike three. That's a huge out for Ansley Furbush. Goes back to that change up and just gets Lindy Ray Davis to swing right through it. One of the most feared bats in the SEC, Sarah Mosley. Ofer in game two with the walk and run scored. Earlier today in our doubleheader in game one, she had three hits and an RBI. <laughs> Sits on that and the count's even. Furbush using her changeup a lot more in this inning against Georgia. Scorcher out to right field, down for a base hit and this rolls all the way to the wall. Mosley with a stand-up double with one out here in the seventh. Well, you can't keep a good hitter down for long, and Mosley shows why. Just takes that offering from Furbush and drives it out to right center field for a stand-up double. Seventh double of the season, 46th of her career. And comes out of the game for a brief moment as Jada Kearney awaits the pinch runner to come out of Georgia's dugout. And 17, Emma Castori, the freshman utility player. It's an important insurance run over there at second base, isn't it? I mean, Ole Miss has some momentum. You, you saw them just score three runs. You know they're capable of you know, being down two and perhaps taking the lead in the home half of the seventh. Oh, absolutely. You you want to fight back and and get another run on the, the board to counteract what Ole Miss did in the bottom of the sixth inning. We've harped all day how good Jada Kearney is at the plate. Here in game two, you saw it four walks, including an RBI with bases loaded. You said it earlier, Miss, you can't keep it down. You can't keep a good hitter down for long. Well, I don't know if you can really, <laughs> when it comes to Kearney, these power hitters, I'm sure she's salivating at swinging <laughs> at a pitch. Oh, yeah, but she's been so patient. She's earned those four walks today, and here Ansley Furbush gets down again 2-0 to her. But here's the thing. You got Sydney Kuma coming up who is three for four today, even though you have an open base. Bouncer through the left side hole. It runners on the corners for Georgia here in the seventh. First hit in game two for Kearney. And that moves up Castori. And another fear, fearful hitter in Sydney Kuma. Because again, like you said, Missy, three for four today with three RBIs. Another hitter. You gotta be cautious facing if you're Furbush. Of course she attacks at the first pitch. And Jamie Traxel comes out of her dugout to have a chat with her Rebels. Got a player at Georgia for a long time. She knows what to expect. She's been in these situations before. Foul ball right side. Is there room? There is for Smith. Runner, stay put. That's a huge out for Ole Miss. Kuma just gets underneath this pitch. And Paige Smith has enough foul territory to be able to make the out. But it doesn't get any easier because you have Jaden Goodwin, who's two for three. Also has home run power. Bouncer up the middle. Star dives for it and tags second base for the out. 
Can Ole Miss come back? One of the best change-ups in the country. A transfer from North Carolina. You're gonna see her throw a rise, a curve, a change-up. And she's gonna throw in the low 60s, which is completely opposite of what you saw from Shelby Waters, Walters, who had been hitting 70s. Against Angelina De Leon. Line drive in the left and a leadoff base hit for Ole Miss to begin the seventh inning down two to Georgia. And now the tying run at the plate. And Jamie Traxel having a chat with our home plate umpire. We may have a pinch hitter. Number 33, Alexa Rosales, freshman. This is her second at bat this year and in her career. And she comes up against Bacchus, against the number five ranked dogs, down two as the tying run at the plate. And she well, sees it for strike one. And if, if, Ole Miss should happen to tie this game and we go into an eighth inning. Ryan Starr is now out. That's the second time that she's been sub four. Top of the order on deck for Ole Miss. Pops her up. Middle infield, and it's Armistead who makes the squeeze for out number one. And almost down to their last two outs with Jayla Lassiter representing the tying run at the plate. She has two hits today. Top of the order for the Rebels, now batting the center fielder, number one, Jayla Lassiter. Lasseter walked, flew out, and grounded out to Lily Backus in game one today. Has had a much better game two. Another multi-hit game for Lasseter. Her 13th multi-hit game this season. And the count's even one and one. Three and one to Lassiter. A good patience by Lassiter to work the count three to one. The hitters, hitters count now. We'll see, we'll see how back is attacked Lassiter. Ball four and the tying runs on the base paths with one down. Now batting, the left fielder, number six, Jaden. Jaden Pone comes up. 0 for 3 in this second game against Georgia today. Fielder's choice, strikeout, ground out here in game two. She had a sack bunt, a bloop out, and a strikeout to Bacchus earlier today in the first game of our doubleheader. And Pone comes up empty, strike one. Lily Backus has four saves this season. That leads the SEC and is fifth in the country. Take strike two. And Backus not wasting any pitches here. She's going right after Jaden Pone. Slap to third, Mosley flips to third to get the lead runner. Two down for Ole Miss in the seventh. What a great heads up play by Mosley at third base. Gets the lead runner. 
De Leon running. Preventing Ole Miss getting another runner in scoring position. Three spot hitter for the Rebels, Paige Smith at the plate. Lines this the other way, down the right field line. This is trouble for Georgia. Lassiter comes in to score. Here comes Pone. No play at the plate. Tie game. Another big hit by Paige Smith. Just smokes this ball down the right field line. Kuma has a little bit of trouble trying to get rid of it before she catches it, allowing Pone to come in and score all the way from first base. Ole Miss now has a chance to win this ball game. The catcher, number 31, Lexi Brady. With Lexi Brady, and they decide to intentionally walk Lexi Brady. They want Ansley Furbush, who's on deck. I don't know if that's really a smart decision because Ansley Furbush was the only batter in, in the first game to get a hit off of Lily Backus. Intentional walk. Brady was the hero in the series against Mississippi State. And they want nothing to do with Lexi Brady here with the winning run on second base. Ansley Furbush comes up to bat. We have a pinch runner at second base for Paige Smith, Manaya Womack. the freshman playing in her 12th game this season. Ole Miss looking to even the series up. And Furbush watches the first one go by. Ole Miss was down five runs going into the sixth inning. And they've tied it up in the sixth and seventh. Furbush, high drive, left field, not enough. Goodwin makes the squeeze, out number three, and we go to extras in October. Both programs, seven runs on 11 hits. Furbush still inside the circle for Ole Miss. Well, there's 7-Eleven's free advertisement on this broadcast. <laughs> right. Might as well head on down to your local 7-Eleven, brought to you by Extra Innings here in Oxford. We had 7-Elevens <laughs> here in yeah, I guess, I guess nothing doing for the uh, the locals down here in Mississippi. No 7-Eleven no nearby. Well, if we were in California, we could go to one. Slapped on through the right side for Ellie Armistead. She has herself a three-hit day now. And a leadoff single for the Dogs in the eighth. That's a huge hit for Armistead to lead off this inning. In game two of our doubleheader, Georgia has had a hit or a base runner in almost every inning but one. Back in the third, they had no hits, no runners. Show a bunt and it's fouled by Gordon. I'm trying to play a little small ball, put a runner in scoring position. Gordon hit into a double play, a 5-4-3 double play, her last at bat. Armistead has two stolen bases this year. There's the bunt, foul ball. One and two. That was one of my biggest pet peeves is not being able to lay down the bunt. 
You are sacrificing yourself. There is nowhere for you to go. Just put it down. Put it in play. Come on, Missy. It's harder than it looks. No, All right. No. <laughs> Flown to the right side. Out of play. Should be one of the easiest things that you do. Now you're going to tell me free throws are easy, too. Yeah, if you <laughs> practice them. <laughs> Those lose ball games if you don't hit them. So. Turns on this, but way out of play. Gordon with a single today. Missy said earlier she bounced into that 5-4-3 double play. <laughs> On the corner, strike three. Wow. That's a big strikeout for Ansley Furbush. You have Emily Digby up, who hit a home run to right field her last time up off of Ansley Furbush. Checked at it. They peeled on the first base. She did not go around. You mentioned Digby's home run. It was opposite field. Out in, right, in, out in right field. Third homer of the season. Hard hit ball to short. Off the glove of De Leon. Ricochets into left field. And Georgia's got something cooking here in the eighth. Runners on first and second base and one away. Now batting for the Bulldogs, the center fielder number one, Dallas Goodnight. Digby's had a good series. Now with a single to follow up that solo home run. Up to Dallas Goodnight with one down. And the runners on base for her. Hit by pitch, walk today, strike out on the ground out. And you're going to assume that the corners are going to move in knowing that uh, Goodnight could lay down a bunt here. She had a sacrifice in her first hit bat in the first game. Juniors ahead, 2-0. Oh. Don't want to lose good night here, even though Davis had, has had her struggles at the plate. You don't want to face the top of the lineup for Georgia. Furbush gets that one over. Top of the order has done a lot of damage all season for Georgia. How's that off? Three and two. The order hasn't done a ton of damage today for Georgia. I should say in game two for Georgia. A lot of free passes. They only have two hits. Both hits came in the seventh inning. Other than that, Miss, you a lot of runs scored via, or I should say, walks and runs scored via free passes. Yeah, and it's really been the middle of the lineup that has put the hits together to score those runs. Game one, however, was a different story. Oh! That loads him up. Uh, that one gets away from Ansley Furbush. And unfortunately for Ole Miss, 
loads the bases. You can see her just drop her head, knowing that that got away. Hope good night's okay. And the coaches' meetings out on the dirt, right on cue. Bases loaded after Ole Miss just tied the game up to force extra innings in this bottom half of the seventh. And Furbush in some trouble with bases loaded for Georgia, one away. And it's Lindy Ray Davis coming up to swing for Georgia. Coaches back to the dugout. They're going to stick with Furbush with bases loaded. Well, Furbush is so experienced in her senior year here for Ole Miss. And so she's been in these situations. She knows what she needs to do. It's just a matter of hitting those spots. Lindy Ray Davis has struck out three times tonight. She had a two RBI single in game one, along with a foul out RBI as well. Furbush steals a first pitch strike to the number one batter in this lineup for Georgia today. And starts her off with a change up. She belts this one down the right field line. Is it fair? Foul. Oh, hearts are in the throats of all <laughs> Ole Miss fans yeah, in she, attendance. She definitely got all of that one. Now Furbush is ahead in the count here against Davis, 0-2. Two and two. Yeah, Furbush climbs the ladder on that pitch, trying to get Davis to bite, but she is so patient and so good at knowing the zone. Furbush one pitch away from either giving Georgia the lead we're getting a second out. Well, this is a great at bat by Lindy Ray Davis to work a full count here. Swung on into left to the gap, base hit. Armistead comes in. Two runs are in. Davis clears the bases. A double to clear him for the dogs. But we talked about how great of a hitter she was in the first game, how patient she is. She just takes this ball and drives it out to left center field. Furbush doesn't want to walk her, so she has to put something close, and Davis makes her pay. And now Mosley sends one in the air to right. Playable for Orman, who makes the catch, or sorry, McKay. And they get that win over Ole Miss this weekend in our doubleheader day. Hard hit ball right to first base. Out number one, Delaney Rummels retired. Big first out for Georgia. They didn't get that first out back in the sixth or seventh innings, and that led to rallies for Ole Miss, remember, Missy? Yeah, it did, and... Delaney Rummel, first pitch swinging. And that's a big out for Backus. Another one over to first. Two pitches, two outs for Georgia. And one out away from taking the series in Oxford against Ole Miss. How about Emily Digby taking the first two outs of the inning? Both first pitch swings from Ole Miss. You would think that they'd be a little bit more patient knowing that they have three runs to score to tie this ball game. They need base runners. 
De Leon at the plate. She goes first pitch swinging out to right, and this gets down. Two hit day for her. Ole Miss still with life in the eighth. Grace Thompson. Now batting for the Rebels, the second baseman, number 21, Grace Thompson. Watches the first one go by. She's 0 for 1 with a pop out back in the seventh. If you're Ole Miss 2, you had the winning run on second base back in the seventh. I'm sure the Rebels will be kicking themselves if they can't come back. Yeah, they've had opportunities. But if you look at the line score, Georgia has left 13 runners on base. That has got to be driving head coach Tony Baldwin crazy. You know, and at first I was like, well, they're, they're up five, right? It's seven to two at the time going into the sixth. I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe they'll just let that one go. And all of a sudden you, you look at those 13 runners left on base and you're like, oh my God. Right. Hack and miss, and Ole Miss down to the last strike. Just a lot of missed opportunities for Georgia. Swing and a miss, strike three. Georgia.